Welcome back, I hope all is well. If you saw the title of this video, you might have cringed a little bit. A day in the life. Now haven't we all seen tons of videos like that? A day in the life of XYZ, a day in the life of this and that. Now hopefully today's video will not be like those other videos, although those are great. The ones where people walk you through their day and they do like a vlog style kind of thing. I find myself very entertained by those. At the end of the day though, today is not going to be a vlog. What today is gonna to be is hopefully a video that will help inspire you to create a day that works for you. Now, I'm gonna walk you through a typical day. Well, I'm actually gonna walk you through two typical days because there's kind of two different types of days that I have in private practice. And I'm gonna take you through from the morning until the evening, and I'm gonna to explain to you what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and then hopefully this will help you learn something about what I do, and maybe you'll wanna implement some of that. And then also there'll be other areas where perhaps you want to do your own thing because you saw what I'm doing and it wasn't really for you. So by the end of this video, I hope you'll be able to at least think about what you want your day to look like. For those of you who have been in private practice for a while, maybe you'll be able to do something a bit new after watching this video. Or for those of you who have not started yet and are curious about what it might look like to be in private practice, hopefully this gives you a good starting point. So let's jump right into that. But before we do, if you haven't done so already, please do go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit the thumbs up button on this video, only if you want to though, there is no pressure. So I sit down at my desk at 9 a.m. to begin work. Now I'm not seeing clients at 9 a.m. My first clinical session starts at 10 a.m. So at 9 a.m. it's built in for admin time. So what am I doing during this admin time? Well, I'm answering emails and following up on things from the night before. I'm looking at any people who have requested cancellations or who are looking to switch times, any appointment requests, uh, this kind of thing. So general admin stuff. And also there'll be billing and insurance processing, you know, all that kind of stuff I do typically in the beginning of my day. The other thing I do during this hour is to review all of the charts for the clients that I'm going to see that day. So I can remember what we talked about last session. I can get prepared with any homework or material that I wanna bring into this session and so that my notes are set up before we start. Uh, this is crucial because this allows me then to complete a note following the session in under 10 minutes. And I'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. So the admin time in the morning is multi-purposed. And now again, these are the typical things that I do on a daily basis. However, each day it could look a little different depending on the needs. So if I need to deal with a billing issue and it takes 45 minutes, I'll spend that time doing the billing issue. If I have treatment plans to do, uh, maybe I won't answer as many emails, but I'll work on the treatment plans for the clients I'm about to see. So I have to have some sort of flexibility. At the end of the day though, I have found that having an hour long admin session before I start my day helps me to really be prepared and ready to start seeing clients at 10 a.m. It has been really, really helpful for me. And then at 10 a.m., I begin my client sessions. Now I run sessions every hour and my clinical sessions are 45 minutes. So I'll see a client for 45 minutes and then I'll spend that other 15 minutes writing a note and taking a quick break or even allowing some buffer in case a session goes a bit longer than planned. And that way I'm never rushing into my next session that starts the following hour. And I'll typically run sessions for about four in a row, sometimes more, sometimes less, but I typically have four client sessions in a row. There's really not much more to say about what I'm doing. I'm seeing clients for those blocks of time. And then after that, I have built in one hour for a lunch break. And this is where, obviously, you guessed it, I'm going to eat lunch and then rest up and get ready for my next sessions. By rest up, I mean just stepping away from my desk and sitting somewhere else or walking around to get ready for my following session. I have found that this is a very important time to build into the day. It not only allows me to kind of rest up and get ready for the following sessions, but it allows me to eat which as you know, is very important for sustaining energy. Uh, again, I think that this hour is really, really crucial to build into the day. When I first started private practice, I discounted this. I figured I could just eat in between sessions with like five minutes or I'll eat after, it's not a big deal. Uh, that didn't work out that well. I would usually be super hungry, uh, really tired, and it just wasn't helpful. So I quickly transitioned and now I have an hour slot built in for lunch. Now again, like anything else, of course there are times when emergencies pop up or I have to do something during that time. 
Uh, but for the most part, I do try to take lunch during that hour break. Following this lunch break, I then start client sessions again, typically within the three to four session ballpark. Same as before, every hour, 45 minute sessions, 15 minute for admin and anything else that needs to get done. And my last client session will be at 4 p.m. so that I can wrap up everything by around 5.15. So when I see my last client at four, it obviously ends at 4.45. And then from 4.45 to five, I finish that client's notes and do what I do for the other sessions. And then for the last 15 minutes of the day, I will do any kind of urgent emails that need to be answered before that day and pretty much complete any urgent admin task that's come in throughout the day that cannot wait until tomorrow. I will also use that time to build a to-do list for the following day. So the non-urgent things or the things that can wait, I don't wanna just have to scramble through my, uh, my inbox the next morning. I create a list that kind of gets my day started the following day. So what I just described to you, an hour admin session starting at nine, uh, client sessions for three to four hours after that, a lunch break, client sessions three to four hours after that, and then a small admin session at the very end of the day is what a typical day looks like in my private practice. This is a majority of the days. However, I do have one other day that I've built in to my schedule that allows for a greater flexibility. What do I mean by that? Well, what I do is one day a week, I have client sessions in the morning and everything that morning will look like what I just described. So 9 a.m. start time and then 10 a.m. until about 12 uh, client sessions. And then after that though, I have blocked off the afternoon. This then gives me an entire afternoon to work on things like marketing, uh, building the website, any sort of creative projects that I'm working on for the private practice. Maybe it's, it's it could be really whatever I need to do that takes a decent amount of time for my practice or my business. And so that will allow me to do things that are that cannot be confined to like five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. These are times for big projects and admin. So when it's time to do taxes, sometimes I'll use that time to do my taxes, my accounting, all that kind of stuff. And for me, this is really crucial because you can't get all your tasks done into like hour long blocks or 15 minute blocks. And you really don't wanna be doing this kind of work outside of your business hours. Now, I think that one thing people don't often talk about, the struggle for a private practitioner is more often working too much rather than not enough. And this is because your private practice is your own business. Uh, it's your reputation. It's something you've worked hard to do. You want it to be a, a good business for both yourself and your clients. And so I found that the temptation is typically to work more. And so having a time built in where I can do some of those bigger projects within the workday really helps me to reduce the overflow in the hours that I need to spend outside of being a therapist. So again, I think this is different for everyone. Some people have two big admin sessions. Some people have a bunch of small ones. It looks different for everyone. I think at the end of the day, the point I'm trying to make is that you should have at least one bigger block of time where you can devote to things like admin, projects, creativity, whatever it may be. I think it will be really, really helpful for you. In some ways, you kind of need that time. Let me tell you about a couple of things that I've been thinking through as I created a schedule like this. And the first thing, which you've already mentioned, is how do I keep my work contained within my work hours? Uh, you are a private practice owner and a therapist, and you don't necessarily want this to bleed into every area of your life. You know, you don't want to be answering phone calls, you know, every weekend and late at night and answering emails all the time. Maybe you do, but for most people, they kind of want that work-life balance. At least that's what they share with me. And so one way to do that is to organize your day that lends itself to creating that kind of separation and balance for yourself. And so you really wanna consider how do you get some of the admin tasks done within your day? And so this is why I have 45 minute sessions but block off an hour so I can do all my client notes right after the session is over. This is why I have a hour long admin session at the start of my day and a 15 minute one at the end of the day. This helps me wrap things up and get admin stuff done at the beginning and end of the day so I don't have to take it home with me. Uh, also, this is why I've built in a big admin session because I know that I like to do creative projects and spend time on website building and marketing. I really enjoy that and I find it to be a valuable addition to my private practice. So that is why I've built in one long afternoon where I can devote my time to that. 
So if things pop up throughout the week that I really want to work on, but I don't have time for, I can always slot it in uh, that, that bigger time slot. Also, if I want to do some networking, have an afternoon where I'm more flexible. So the other thing I thought about was creating flexibility. Now, already by the nature of being in private practice, your schedule is flexible. You make it on your own. You kind of decide what hours you work and what hours you don't work. However, it's also not that flexible because when you see clients, uh, there's no flexibility there. You need to be uh, at your desk or in your office at that time to see the client. Uh, there's nothing else you can do during that time. You know, it's not like a creative project where you can work on it whenever you want, wherever you want. Uh, it's a set time for a set amount of time and that's it. You have to be there. So in order to have some flexibility for other things, it's going to be really important to build some flexibility into your schedule. And you don't want to be so constrained to like 15 minutes here, half hour there. You are going to want one time that's at least fairly flexible. And so I would encourage you to think about adding that into your schedule as well. So that's pretty much it. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you learned something. Perhaps you have a starting point for your day if you're just gonna start private practice, or perhaps you've been in private practice a while and you learned something new today. Either way, I'm glad you watched. I'm glad you're here, and I look forward to seeing you soon.